All right, so yeah, we are uh, going to uh, work on uh, um, writing foolproof I.O. Um, uh, I/O uh, functions and put up with functions and, and see how they how we can actually write it in a way that it can be used in a general way in many different ways and um, 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 try to make it better as we go and we're going to do it on the fly so there is no uh, scripting done over here and I, that I, I don't want to I want it to be exactly uh, as uh, um, um, how you are how you're going to program it by yourself so we're going to do it together and go through it one by one and see how it can be done. Um, so, as I mentioned, when you have a class like this that is a utility class, and I only want to, um, let me just put over here names, uh, include, uh, oh, sorry, it should be right here, um, there we go, so in here I'm going to say namespace, stds, okay, and let's save it all. And now I'm going to go in utils over here and, and start with uh, some easy thing. Let's say we want to do something. We want to uh, receive an integer from the entry uh, in a foolproof way to make sure that everything that is entered is perfectly correct and exactly how it's supposed to be. Other than that, we're going to uh, do something about it. So if I want to actually write this function, this function is, doesn't belong to any specific uh, class or any specific thing. It's in my utils. That's why I'm going to make it a static uh, method. When you write static, it means it belongs to class and not the object. You don't need to instantiate utils to actually call it. You can call the function as a function as, by itself. So in here, um, I, uh, I want to write uh, a foolproof uh, integer entry. So we can uh, have this integer entry received in two different ways. Number one, let's uh, make the uh, read ent uh, the, the 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 read function that we are doing that is supposed to read an integer foolproof, which means if somebody enters the function, there is no way to get out. They have to enter an integer and go out, otherwise, it's not going to happen. If they can't do anything about it, um, or we could have it in a way that if they want, if they come in and they enter something wrong, we simply come out and uh, make sure that the function told us that uh, the entry was done incorrectly. There are two different ways of writing it. But uh, I'm going to start with the first one. So I'm going to write over here void, which means I'm not returning anything back. And I'm going to call it read. Now in read, I want to receive an integer and, and get it from the, from the entry. Uh, so to send it back easily, I'm going to use a reference over here. So integer reference number is the number that I'm going to pass back. Uh, when you receive a number, um, what do you want to get? Like you want to have it uh, between a range, obviously, between two ranges. And uh, for that, we can actually uh, uh, show the limits, add the limits right to the read function. So I actually write something like integer min and integer max to know exactly what is the minimum maximum that we are supposed to enter and uh, that will be our function so we write a function like this okay and because it's a static thing then uh, I don't need to worry about anything or make it uh, uh, have it as any it's like it's like a global variable that belongs to a class a global variable for a class so that everybody can use it without instantiating the class so creating the function, it's going to be like this. So we're going to actually look at the function in this way. Um, whenever, uh, like, I don't know how I am going to make up my mind through writing a function, what I do is that I create a flag and make that flag my uh, um, success flag. So I don't have to go through multiple conditions. When you're doing something like this, it eases your mind when you are actually creating a, uh, a, a, in here, essentially what I need to do is to write some kind of a loop, something like this, while user did something wrong. And keep going back over and over and over and over until user gets it right. Now, if I do something like this, 
then I have to keep checking to see what are the cases that user can do something wrong. And combining conditions like that becomes difficult. If that's the case, like for me, it's like that. I, I initially, no matter what, I create a flag. I'm going to say, uh, what do I say? Um, Boolean, OK. OK. And I'm going to say OK is false. So, so it's a pessimistic type of thing. So in here, I'm going to say while not OK, do that. And then now I decide what's going to happen to that OK uh, when I am doing my action of reading inside this loop. Uh, and that's the general uh, situation for any type of user interface that, that, you, that you're supposed to write. Um, are we OK with this? Let me see. How can I now access that poll again? Oh, here it is. Okay, yeah. So, holy moly. Okay, no, that's gonna. Let me just try try this one again. Uh, so I'm gonna say, are we okay with this? No, it doesn't. Okay, I have to find out how this pulley thingy works because uh, now if I want to go and find it, I have to start from the beginning again. Anyway, so we're okay with this, right? So write it over there, write it in the chat, forget about the poll. It's, uh, uh, I have to see how can I have an instant poll over here, uh, which is quick. All right. Uh, so, uh, f uh, okay, perfect, thank you. Um, that kind of shows me that you're there and I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay, so the well, first thing I'm going to do is... Uh, actually read from uh, wherever I want. So um, it would be an interesting idea to actually pass the O stream in here because you don't know from where you want to read it. So I'm going to just because I don't know, I'm just going to uh, add the O stream over here and add it to the to the uh, uh, to the uh, as a header file. So using namespace std so in here i'm not going to say c in because maybe i want to read from somewhere else somehow i don't know uh, uh, or we can change it later on for for now i'm going to do c in and later on you'll see that we can change it and modify it to do whatever we want to do with it so um, i'm going to say over here c in into uh, uh, the number so i'm going to get it from the number now i can have two choices we make, uh, and I think it's better to do that because we have a reference over here. Um, I want this value to change only if user successfully enters something. If user enters something that is not within the boundary, then it's going to change it. Um, is it important for us? No, because uh, read will not let them go until it is right. So in our case, we're just going to leave it like this. Forget it. So C in num. You see, I'm thinking out loud. I wanted to create a local variable, put it in a local variable and set the num later. But it, there is no way for this read to let people go if they enter something incorrectly. So uh, that's why I don't want to uh, change the... Um, uh, that's a, what I don't care if it's changed or not because eventually it's going to be overwritten by something valid. So I'm going to go... C in, I'm going to receive something from entry. Now, as soon as I get something uh, from entry, can you please tell me what do you do when you want to enter something on the keyboard? To be able to enter something and user read it, what are the actions? Let's say if I want to enter number 10, okay? I want to enter number 10. What keys are hit on the keyboard? Can you tell me, please? I want to enter number 10 with, with my, thank you. So Sitong wrote it perfectly. So it's 10 and then enter. Fantastic. So if this C in reads the number, then where does that new line go? It stays in the keyboard, right? I want to make sure that user doesn't enter something like 10 ABC. I want to make sure that user enters the value uh, ends the entrance of the value with an enter so only an integer is received so I, what i'm going to do i'm going to actually create over here a character i'm going to call it new line 
but I'm going to set it to X or something so it's not new line. Now I'm going to say new line is set to cn.get. So what happens is that right after, right after I enter the get the value, I'm going to re read one character. If this one character over here is not new line, it means user failed. Okay, so now, and the other way to fail is for user to actually enter something wrong in here. So if user enters, say, um, uh, if user enters ABC, then it won't be able to read it and see in fail. So if that C in fails, Okay, so if C in fails or new line is not new line, what does it mean? It means there are two possible choices. Either users entered 10 and hit enter, which is wrong. This is this cannot be read. Or user entered, so this is for the first one that C in fail. Or user entered something like 10 um, and something after. And something after. And then hit enter. So what happens is that in any case, either users enter something other than enter. Or user starts with something that is not integer. I'm going to have garbage in keyboard. So the very first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say, hey, uh, this OK is false. I am, I am not, I'm not something, it's not happening correctly, so I'm just going to stop right over here. Okay, it's false. Now I'm going to say scene.clear. Okay, so I'm going to tell to scene, I acknowledge that something went wrong, and even if it didn't go wrong, scene clear won't hurt. hurt. Then I'm going to say now, ignore some ridiculous number of uh, characters until you hit backslash n. So it's going to clean up the keyboard and everything, and we are done and good, and everything's good. Okay? So if this thing happens, so if I get to this point, this means a valid integer value was entered. Do we understand this? And I'm pausing. It means I'm I'm waiting for 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 your reply. If um, like uh, so, if you if there's a problem over here, tell me that. Uh, um, uh, it, so, uh, uh, Salman, you asked the uh, valid or invalid. What are you talking about? Oh yeah, yeah sorry, an invalid. You're right. You're right. Yeah, because it's going yes, yes, yes. An invalid it's, integer it's, was entered. That's perfectly correct. So it correct. means an invalid integer was entered. Perfectly correct. Okay, so, um, all right. So if not over, so it's an invalid integer, not invalid integer. It is, and not an invalid integer. Inva um, yes, it's an invalid integer. But when I come over here in this place, it is a valid integer, but I don't know if it is in range, correct? So I think that's obvious. Now, how do I know if it's in, if it's in range or not? I can simply say over here, if uh, uh, num is greater than or equal to min and num is less than or equal to max, then everything's good. And if not, then it's bad. So in here, I can simply say uh, if not this value, then OK will be false. Correct? So and other than that, OK will be true. So um, no, that's actually... <laughs> OK will be true, and now OK will be false. So if we have this value, we are OK to go. If not, then we are not OK. So in here, everything 
good to go. Int is not in range. Okay? So, um, and if, uh, so if uh, something goes wrong over here, it's going to go back and start getting it again. So let's try it and see if it's going to work. Let's do a test drive and see what happens. So uh, <clears throat> we need to actually show some kind of messages over here to see uh, what, what user is actually doing in here. So um, in here, I'm going to say, uh, um, see out, uh, please enter a valid integer value okay I'm just gonna put a column right in front of it and in here if it's not in rage I'm gonna say see out uh, value uh, I'm just gonna print a message saying uh, putting um, max over here and then in here, I'm going to say value and in here, I'm going to say minimum or yeah, I think this is uh, obvious if I do it like this. Uh, and in here, I'm going to say try again. OK, so let's see if it's going to work. So. Um, let's save it. I'm going to go to the program over here and have uh, include uh, um, utils.h int main and that return zero. And in here, I'm going to say what am I going to say? I'm going to say using namespace SDDS integer A and I'm going to say let's uh, let's have uh, uh, IO, uh, IO stream and using namespace STD. So I'm going to say C out, enter a number. between 10 and 20 and we're gonna have a be set to uh, I will gonna say utils read and I'm gonna put over here a between 10 and 20 so that's gonna be the function call for reading an integer so um, And I'm going to say C out. You entered. Okay. So now if I run this program, let's see how it's going to happen. I'm just going to run it first and then we'll see if it's going to work or not. So uh, enter. So I'm going to say, um, um, I don't know, 11. So it's going to say, please enter a valid integer value. Now I'm going to say uh, 11 it is. Hit enter. Still is going to tell me uh, an invalid value. I'm going to say 9. Hit enter. It's going to say value should be. That's wrong. I should put it the other way. Usually the um, smaller values are left. But value should be between 10 and 20. Uh, I'm going to say 21. It's not going to accept it. Now I'm going to say 15. And it's going to say you entered 15. So as you see, it is working perfectly for uh, reading um, an integer in any way. And if user enters no matter what type of garbage in here, it's just going to clean everything up. And as soon as user enters some correct value, it's perfectly good. One last try for the upper boundary. I'll put 20. 20 is good. So we, we are good and everything's fine. Are we okay with this get uh, read int of mine?
All right. So, so now that have, that we have done this, this was version one. So I'm going to put over here uh, utils.cpp v1. I'm going to call it v1.cpp utils.v1.cpp. I'll save it. So that's version one. And now let's uh, um, see what we can do to make the code better. Okay. Uh, uh, first thing first, um, what if user want, uh, like the error messages seem to be good, but uh, I want to be able to set proper error messages that uh, we want to actually show. So um, what I would suggest that if user provides some kind of a prompt, we can actually give the prompt instead of having valid integer and value. And first, let me check fi fix this value. So minimum, I'm going to make it like that. And that becomes maximum. Try again. Um, so let's actually, and also you, when user wants to read something, they sometimes want to show a prompt. Now, um, I want to see which one you think is more. Uh, let, let, let's start with the with the error message first. A custom error message. So maybe user wants to show their own error message. So I'm gonna actually put something like this. I'm gonna put uh, const character pointer error message, and by default I'm gonna set it to null ptr. Okay, so now the user can actually have a custom error message. Um, so if the value that is coming in is not an integer, and let me actually add this one over there. It's not supposed to be uh, uh, here. Copy. Put it in utils.h over here. Okay, so that will be the error message if they provide an error message for me. I'm going to show it. So if it is an invalid integer, it's an invalid integer. So this error message, I'll, I'll let it be. But in here, I'm going to say the error message would be. So I'm going to say if the error message exists, then see out error message. Otherwise, if they didn't provide the error message, I will show this. Okay, so um, I think this will work. So uh, in here, for example, I can go uh, have something like between 0 and 100. And now for read and in here, I'm, I can say invalid mark. Try again. Okay. So now I want to get a mark for a, for something that is between 0 and 100. Um, uh, now, if I actually run the program, if I don't mention anything, so I'm going to write the read in two different ways. One with and the other one without. Okay, so I'm going to do one read. In here it says 10 and 20, so I'll put over here, I don't know, 30. As you see, oh, it says 30. <laughs> and see, that's that I enter a number between 10 and 20. I said 10 and 20 over here. That's wrong, so that's 0 and 100. We can actually make this one custom to pass it to read. We'll, 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 we'll think about it in two seconds. So uh, 100, and I'm going to put over here 200. Now it's going to say... Uh, uh, zero and value should be between zero and 100. Try again. So that I'm going to put over here 50. You entered 50. Now this is the next one being called without any prompt. Now in here I'm going to put uh, uh, 400. It's going to say invalid mark. Try again. And now if I put over here 80, 80 is entered. So uh, it looks okay to me. So uh, are we okay with what I just did? All right, so now that we have done that, we can actually do a prompt too. So um, 
we can uh, again how to design a thing it's uh, it's absolutely and it's getting too big over here uh, i believe it's like this read is getting a little ginormous over here let me see what how, how we can simplify this code um, first of all uh, in here when i'm doing something like this I'm just receiving an integer with nothing. So I just want to receive an integer, see if the integer was valid or not, and just get out if that was the case. So what I can do is actually write another read function, void uh, util. So I'm going to, so my, the, a read function that has nothing, it just receives an integer, and that's it. So I'm going to create uh, something like uh, uh, static void read uh, and I'm gonna write over here integer num and that's that's how it's going to be so that read thing yeah plain read with nothing is something that's gonna simplify that one a lot so I'm gonna say utils read integer num And this entire thing can go right in there. So essentially, I'm copying this. Let me just copy this, put it in read. And I'm going to say this happens only in this scenario. So I don't have it like that. So essentially, I'm saying over here, uh, read the number and get it get the new line okay is false clear yada 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 we're going to simplify it later but i think it's going to work so i do not need this part anymore i don't need that new line here anymore i don't need c and me and these these stuff i don't need it I don't need this if statement in here. Now in here, I'm going to say uh, read num. There you go. So now, as you see, um, and why is it not calling the read over there? Oh, I have to, an extra thing over here. There you go. So. If I call a regular read, if I just want to read an integer freely, just wanted to make sure it's, it's, it's uh, uh, so in here I'm going to say uh, invalid integer, try again, okay, and f even for this one I can uh, customize it over here and add something over here to get one or not uh, if I want to. Uh, so that's that. So this just gets an integer if it's valid or invalid. And then it comes over here. Now I have a read over here that is doing this part first. If it passes that one, then it checks for the for the um, integer being valid or invalid and goes back through it. And, uh, um, and it's going to work it that way. So um, are we okay with what I just did? The reason that I'm writing it right in front of you like this is to just show you that, um, just show you that uh, when you are when you are writing programs, you first make your program work, and after you make your program work, you start making it better and better and better. So, uh, Sitang, you were saying I, I think you wanted to say something and stopped halfway through. Do you have a question? Oh, okay. All right. So, all right. So that's that. So that's the read, and we're, we're going to make it better as we go through if we want to. But I think that's good enough for writing a read uh, for an integer, and we can do the exact same thing for a double value too. So I can literally take all these things over here as I did like this. So I can actually copy it over here like that, and just paste it and just change this thing to a double. So all these integers that I have over here, I'm going to change them to a double. Um, so in the selection, I'm going to say all the ints 
will change to doubles. And there we go. Now I have uh, utils for that reads double. They read double. I don't think there's anything that will sound. Uh, and in here it's going to be invalid uh, real number. Invalid number. Try again. It could be any number. So that's the double value. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, it's fine. The only thing I need to do is to add the... Uh, so it's double double and double okay now I can actually read double numbers too just test it very quickly That's going to be A, uh, read A. One of the good things of passing arguments to, uh, passing arguments instead of returning value is that you can always overload that function and it's going to work perfectly for all the things that you have. So you don't have to come up with new names. And in here I'm going to say cout, uh, enter GPA. And GPA value is going to be utils uh, read again. This one is going to be D, and I'm going to say the value will be between 0, 0.0 and 4.0. And I'm going to say invalid GPA. Retry. Okay, so see out. You enter A, and the same thing over here, you enter D. Run the program, and the integer when we know it works, or oh, oh, why is it stop? So we made a boo-boo, I have to fix it. So good, so now we are actually trying. So that read failed, I want to know why. So utils over here, the read failed. So it's getting the number if it's not no line. It's going to clear, ignore. If it is a correct thing. Oh, I think I forgot to set the, <laughs> I, I forgot to set the okay to true. <laughs> so in here it's going to be uh, else ok is true and I have the same problem over here else ok is true run it one more time 50 you're into 50 GPA I'm going to put 5 and by the GPA, I'm going to put 3.5, and you enter 3.5, and the double things, and everything works. Uh, are we okay down to here? All right. Thank you. And by the way, Siran, I like your camera. That's a nice camera, man. Okay. <laughs> I just saw it. Anyways, uh, so... Let's uh, uh, let's make uh, this uh, uh, function a little more C++ uh, like a, a pro version of it. I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna make it utils v2. So this is utils v2. I'm gonna save it as that one. Utils v2. All right. So I have a condition here. Okay. Now that I know. If this condition is bad, it's false, these things are supposed to happen. 
so I'll, I, I'm just looking at the condition that I have over here so if the condition is like that then these things are supposed to happen and then a message is supposed to be shown I want to make my code shorter how do I do that so um, one of the things that I can do I can always uh, change it over here and say boolean I can say over here hmm I want to make it uh, I want to make the code shorter um, what I can do is remove this thing from here and see over here I'm gonna say bad is true I'm gonna say while bad and I'm gonna say over here bad is equal to this condition so now if I do something like this so now what happens over here it's going to set the condition over here if the condition is bad bad is going to get true then it's going to go back uh, so it's, it's going to go back up and if uh, the condition goes false bad is going to go false and it's going to come out so i don't have to uh, uh worry about all these uh, uh two things they writing an else statement over there and it's a little shorter and uh, uh but if you if you think the other one is more uh, comfortable to write you can always do it I just want to show you that um, after you're done you can start optimizing your code and make it make it smaller and better and you keep going forward like that anyway so uh, we can do the same thing for the for the read to put a prompt over here so modify this to, to the way that you want and by the way you can use all these things for project whatever you are using there's no problem uh, if you want to get values like this uh, you can use all these things um, so, uh, and I change version 2, you know what, I'm not going to even change it, let's, let's let it be like that. That was very readable and understandable, so let's just leave it like that, and uh, uh, if we have extra time at the end, we're going to do the modifications. Now, uh, shall we continue, so I just want to see if we are... Uh, uh, okay to write another thing so what I want to do next is uh, um, say reading a string with a specific length and show an error message if the length of the string is bigger than what it's supposed to be so this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna write a code again static void that's another read this one receives a character pointer let's say a string and I'm gonna have an integer maximum length and now I know that I can actually have an error message for it so I'm gonna put over here error message and I'm gonna set that to null PTR so now what I want to do is writing writing a a read function that receives a string up to specific length length in the string and if it's more than that it is going to give me an error message I'm thinking if I do something like this it's a tough one to write uh, if you write 50 for double doesn't work using SDRLEN uh, what are you talking about SDRLEN uh, activate your microphone please talk to me yeah for the last one we can use SDRLEN we get the char and using SDRLEN and compare it with the max lens you're talking and which one you're talking about you're talking about read the one that you are going to write all uh, right now yeah uh, the, 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 I'll, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Let me just write it, and I'll and I'll tell you. So, uh, not yeah. only SDRLEN, we don't want to use SDRLEN as much as we want because then 
we're going to go into uh, C string. We are trying to make leave this as C plus plus. Okay. Right. So, nice. but 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 that's that's not what I wanted to say. I wanted to say. Give me a second. Okay. Give me a second. Let's say I have over here. Uh, so this is uh, I'm going to say um, a read tester. So zero one. Read tester. Read number tester. Dot cpp. Uh, my concern is this. The, the, the reason that I actually, uh, I, I always think about worst case scenarios. Let's say I want to receive a license plate number. A license plate number is maximum eight characters. So I'm going to say character plate number, and I'm going to put nine over here, including the thing. So that could be a license plate number. Are we all okay with this thing, with this license plate number? Type a yes for me so quickly we can see. All right. Okay, perfect. So now I want to call that read that I want to design over there and say, uh, see out, uh, enter a license plate number. Okay. And then I want to be able to write over here a read <coughs> plate number. And then I write over here eight invalid invalid license plate number. Okay, so, and that's utils. So, my concern is this. Let me just write it using, uh, uh, write the, um, the function using get line, and I'll tell you what my concern is. So, yeah, we can do that. See, so what I'm going to do over here is this. Again, I'm going to go with my standard. So I'm going to say Boolean OK is true. And I'm going to say do. And I'm going to go while not OK. And now I'm going to sit and think. OK, as simple as that. So uh, we have get line. What get line does, it essentially reads up to certain number and then stops. So now in here I can actually say um, say uh, C in dot uh, get line and I'm gonna put just say put it in string and we know get line needs the actual length of the array, not the length of the string. So in here I'm gonna say max len max len plus one and just to put emphasis on it I'm gonna say up to new line we know that that's new line already so what happens is that get line is gonna get up to maximum length over here and after it, it's gonna stop if and it stop and fail the C in if it's more than that so now what I can do over here is say simply if C in dot fail now I can over here see in dot clear and see in dot ignore ignore yeah one thousand or whatever ten thousand and backslash n which means they entered something incorrectly so the length is too long and uh, set the okay to false. But again, I, when I start it, I have to set the OK to true to make because if because that's going to remain false all all the time. So I have to do it like this every time I set it to OK and hope for the best. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And uh, now I need to show the error message. So uh, how do I show the error message? In here, I'm going to say if error message. I'm going to show the error message.
and done. So I think this is good. Okay. Um, uh, everybody understood what I just did. Um, do we understand it? Um, I hear I see a minus one from Salman. What's well, I don't know what is that. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So now let's try the license plate thing. Is that uh, what's going to be? So I'm going to say see our plate number just to show it afterwards. You enter. Okay. Now if I run the program. Problem is that if I hit enter, it's going to say nothing. It means there is nothing in there, which is not good. I want them to enter something. Or maybe a blank string, string is, is acceptable. Yeah, they want to enter. Uh, yeah, if they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can have a minimum and maximum, too, if I want to. Yeah, I can have a minimum and maximum. So, yeah. So, uh, anyway, so that, that went... That worked. Now, if I put over here uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, and whatever, now it's going to say invited license plate number. Now I'm going to say A, B, C, uh, 1, 2, 3, and I hit enter. Now it is correct. Uh, so so it's, it's good. So so that, that is actually working. Um, uh, do you think it needs any kind of modification? We need to add anything to this? Anything missing in here? Anyone? I can add a minimum and maximum to this too, by the way. I can have something like integer minimum length and maximum length. So we can have something like this. And now uh, someone's uh, SDR lens is going to come to play. To tell us actually what is the length that the length of the thing and if the length is not proper, but I'm not going to use SDR len. SDR len is easy to write, so I'm going to say static over here, void SDR len, uh, and I'm going to put a constant character string over here, and I'm going to write the function myself. It's two lines of code. Why do I need to do that? So this is integer minimum length. Okay, and the S, uh, so that's that one, and the SDR len will be essentially uh, something like this. So I have, uh, I um, let's let's make it easy. I'm gonna go integer i for i set to zero, i less and SDR i being not equal to null. and I++. plus plus. Let's see what happens in here. So let's say I over here, let's say the length of the character is one. So it comes over here I0, zero. I0 zero is not null, then I becomes one, it comes back in here, I1 is zero, it comes out and so I think it's perfectly good. And I don't know why is it, oh, there we go. So now I can say return I. And that's my SDR len. Okay. And why is it doing that? Oh, I, I have void over here. Why void? Int, my apologies. Okay, so that's integer. It returns an SDR len for me, and I'm done with it. So I have SDR len now. Now I don't have to include. Uh, someone, do we, uh, do we understand what happened with that SDR len of mine? So that's what I wanted to say. Like if we actually, like many of the functions that you are writing, they're very simple functions. So um, you can actually write it and use it as you please. So now in here, I'm going to write that. Uh, there you go. That read, I'm going to write, where is it? There you go. So now in here, if everything's good, in here I'm going to say else. 
if um, str len of str was less than minimum length, then OK is false. Please try to optimize the code. If you see the code is not optimized, then uh, then set it up and optimize it properly. So, so now a license plate number, it can be actually set properly. I can say between one and eight because you can have one letter for license plate or you can have eight. So now if I actually enter it like this, hopefully if I just hit enter, it's going to hang because I didn't print any message. Um, so in here, I have to have the error message coming up. So error message. Oh, oh. Sorry, it's an alert. Oh, it's just testing. There is no danger to your health or safety. This was an actual emergency. You will... Okay. Did anybody get uh, uh, an alert on their cell phone other than me? Okay, good. So I just wanted to make sure that my phone is not hacked. So, so now uh, this error message should get printed in any ways that I want. So I'm going to come right down over here and say, so if it's not okay, uh, I have to print this out. So I'm going to do something cool over here. Uh, so let me just do it like this. So I'm going to say, if not okay, I'm going to put the error message over here. So if it's not OK, it's going to actually show uh, the message now. Now, if I run the program, uh, it's going to say, uh, so if I put over here, if I put nothing, it's going to say invalid license plate number. If I put A, B, now it accepts it. OK, uh, so that's what it is. And uh, so and if I and also if I put too long of a number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, something like that. It's going to say still invalid, but if it's only four or three, then it's good. So uh, are we okay with the minimum and maximum for this read thingy that I've done? Okay, and now it's a challenging question. Again, comes up with for, for marks for the final test. And I want you to tell me uh, um, if uh, uh, what, what I'm doing over here is understandable or not. Let me just think for five seconds. I want to change something in here. Just a second. I'm just thinking. Thinking, thinking, thinking. I if I do something like this And run it again. Let's see if it's going to be OK. Now I'm going to say ABC. It's entered. I run it again. Now I'm going to say over here A. It's got to say you entered A. Why did it do that? Oh, because one is valid. One more time. Now it's invalid license plate number. If I make it bill, invalid license plate number. And if I do it like this, now it works. How the devil this thing is working without an if statement? Can anybody tell me?
and that's going to be the break actually that we have we're going to have a little break and then after this one, i'm going to write something that is pretty tough to understand so uh, be ready and get ready for it um, so i'll give you uh, it's uh, we have a class till 1 30 approximately 125 so we're gonna pause and uh, you think and see why it worked and you gotta turn on your microphone and explain um, so as soon as you find out what it is print a message so we know who found it first okay find out why it works and explain it to me why I don't have an if statement and I'll, this error message is getting printed when OK is false and when OK is true it's not getting printed um, if you know the answer put over there I found it and we're gonna come back in at 110 and uh, uh, we'll continue so I'm gonna pause the recording locally I am back hello everyone all right, Salma, explain. Could I see the things, right? Huh? huh? Yeah, could I see the screen? Right, I, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Uh, this file, you mean this file, right? It's not yeah, okay. No, I not... said, I said, I don't the have whole... an if statement over here. How does it run and shows the error message? All right. Yeah. When something is wrong and doesn't show the error message, when something is right. You're right. It first checks uh, the left side of ampersand ampersand that mm. works like if it's not. It says if it's not true, if, if it's not okay, that means true. Goes for the right side of the ampersand ampersand. And uh, inside the parenthesis is the ternary operator. It checks if there is an error message. Mm -hmm. uh, print the error message, and if it's not, it's uh, print an empty. Okay. Now, so, okay, and if okay is true? And if okay is true, it, it ignores the rest of the things, right? And the and person and person. Uh, why? Because uh, it checks if both sides is true. It, it's a Boolean operator, actually, but it acts like the if a statement. Uh, so, so do you know what that thing is called? Boolean. Uh, you're you're okay down to you. Uh, uh, yeah. C tongue. C tongue. Wait, wait, wait. C tongue. Do you know what that thing? C tongue. You you wanted to say the same thing. I I want to see the C out actually is an object, so it uh, has um, conversion to boolean. That's fine. So, so it's and it's going to be always true because this is going to get printed. yeah. Okay, so that's yeah, fine. It's, it's going, so it's always going to just check. So basically, OK is going to dominate the condition because it's always true. Do you know what it's it, called? Logical. No, logical operator is this. What is this fact that when you have false and it has to check the it's not going to check the second part anymore because false and is false for yeah. everything. And uh, when it's true, it has to check the right side because true and something, it depends at right side. That's why the right side gets printed. But what is this thing called? You both uh, got your 3% for uh, the uh, final test, but... But uh, what is this thing called? Remember, this is like these are the things that you even sometimes when you don't when you even know what is happening when you are in an interview or you want to talk to someone, they won't understand you. Okay, this is called lazy evaluation, by the way. Okay, lazy evaluation. Lazy evaluation. Why? Because it says now this is false, and I'm not going to bother checking the rest. I'm lazy. Oh, I see. Yeah. If, if, I to, if it reaches the conclusion of the logical uh, statement, it will not bother the, checking the rest. We call that lazy evaluation. Got that, Sitang? 
Oh, got it. So Thank next you. time when something like this happens, when we say what, when somebody says why, you have to say because of lazy evaluation. And if they say, huh, what does that mean? Then you explain. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank All right. You. So, Thank you. All right, lazy evaluation it is. Now, the, the next thing I want to do over here that is kind of tough, and I hope we have t enough time to do it in around 13 minutes, is uh, actually writing a read statement that doesn't care what is the size. So for that read, I want to have something like this. I want my read, let's put this uh, thingy over here. So I'm going to put strlen over here. And uh, now since we did, we have done that, let's actually do str copy too. So I'm going to have an uh, str copy. I don't know why I copied it. Void. It has nothing to do with that. Str copy, and it's going to be uh, this uh, character pointer destination and source. Okay. So that's what we are going to write. Let me just write that one very quickly. Okay. So. To write a string copy, all I need to do is to start from the beginning and go right to the end, copying everything. So, so all I need to do for string copy is to write, again, these can be written much shorter. I'm kind of writing it long, writing for loops. Be aware of that. So you can make it shorter than this. So integer I set to zero, go up to the point. So, and for example, this, no, no professional programmer writes that. They just write put the value because when it's null it's false right so in here I'm saying keep doing while source is true and put a destination into destination I uh, source I and I plus plus Okay, so that's going to copy everything from one to another right to the end. And to null terminate the end, I'm going to go destination. I is set to null. Zero at the end. Okay, so that's string copy. So string copy is done too. Let's go back in here and tell you what I want, what I want to be written. What I want to be written is something like this. So I have uh, static. I want it to dynamically allocate memory as it's reading it from keyboard and give it to me so I don't have to do so. And I don't need to mention what is the length. I want to have character pointer read and I want to just mention, for example, uh, what do I want to mention over here? Uh, I want to mention uh, mm, from where? From where? File, I don't care, from wherever I want to read. And what is my delimiter? When do I stop? So character uh, delimiter. Okay. Um, so that's, this is, this is what I want to write. I'm going to use the same feature that I used in this one to actually implement what I have in here. So just to show you how it can be done, we're going to go through it like this. So where is it? Where, there we go. So first of all, I need to read chunk by chunk. I cannot just read. Uh, uh, I cannot, because it's keyboard, it could be keyboard or file or something. File I can, but for keyboard I can I cannot know how many things user are, is going to insert. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to say, um, what do I say, character uh, data, a uh, pointer data, the data that I'm receiving uh, would be new um, character, say, 128. And I'm going to put 128 characters I am going to uh, create initially. Um, and I'm going to have that many read. Then I'm going to say, uh, because I don't know how much the uh, user is going to enter, I need to uh, do something like this. So essentially, oh, not like that. I need to. So this is what I have. So this is the 100 and 
28 characters that I pointed to and it is being pointed by data okay so let's put it that way this is data okay now I have to start reading and keep going like that so this data has to always point at the beginning but if I reach to the limit of 128 but for testing instead of 128 I'm gonna make it smaller so it can actually uh, fail quicker so I can actually go through it so I'm gonna put over here something like um, eight characters okay small but that's the eight characters that I have so if user enters six seven I'm good I'm dead right down to here but if user enters nine then what I need to do I have to resize this thing and continue reading after that so where I am reading is not going to be the beginning always if I keep going more I have to continue the reading afterwards and because of that I need to have another pointer some kind of a pointer that points at which location I'm going to start to read obviously initial so um, let's say that's the the string that I'm reading so I'm gonna call that str so str is the string that I'm reading and initially it is going to point where data is pointing so I'm gonna initially start from the same location so that I am going to use another pointer character and pointer I'm gonna call it str and I'm gonna set that one to point where data is pointing and I'm gonna move str forward if they actually want to enter more than what I have in here do we understand down to this point yes that's the idea when when we get to the point I'm gonna actually uh, make it double all right so now that what I'm gonna do uh, is this so and I need to know how many times I'm extending so uh, I'm gonna say over here, integer number of uh, uh, number of chunks or buffers number of buffs how many times I am actually doing it initially it's one it's the data that I have okay uh, obviously I, as usual I, I I, I because I don't know when I'm gonna say boolean done um, so I'm gonna have some boolean thingy and I'm gonna say do do read while not done okay so that's that's what I'm gonna do all right so let's start the very first thing that I need to do is to read up to the amount that I can and let's put something in here so we can actually change it later on so this eight thingy I'm gonna come up in here and in SDS buffer I'm gonna have constant uh, not a constant actually have integer uh, a global variable I'm gonna put over here um, actually I can put it in the utils Aha! I can put it in utils as a public thing so in here I'm gonna say integer uh, uh, SDR CSDR read buffer size holy schmoly and I'm gonna set it to eight now okay it's a big one I know but hey so that's eight so I'm setting that to eight and then in here I'm gonna use that one so where is that eight thingy that I have uh, where was it here so in here I'm gonna say CSTR buffer size okay so now uh, first I'm gonna say done is true which means I'm done unless I'm not okay so I'm hoping that they're gonna enter within the buffer size we know that I can actually go isdr dot uh, get line uh, into uh, the str not data because I want to go further if I want to and I'm gonna go up to the CSDR buffer size and stop at delimiter whatever the delimiter is now if this get line reaches to that to that buffer size it's going to fail if not it won't fail and I'm done so what I need to check to see if it fails so I'm gonna say if ISTR failed now what do I need to do first of all I have to add to the number of buffers I have more now okay so I'm gonna say number of buffs will be uh, plus plus so I'm just gonna add one to the number of buffers that's what I need to do uh, 
Then I have to allocate memory and resize. So I'm going to say character, I'm going to create a temp pointer thingy over here and say new character and uh, what I'm going to do over here, say, uh, I'm going to say buffer size, uh, CSTR buffer size, uh, multiply by um, a number of buffers and I'm going to plus one to it for null if I need to. Okay, so I'm going to say if it's so if it was eight, it now becomes 16, plus one which becomes 17 and it keeps going higher like that. So now I have uh, I, I I made my buffer bigger in here by one size. So it was one first, now it's two. If it goes, becomes three, four, and keep growing bigger. Then what I need to do, I need to copy all the data. Remember the resizing thingy? So I'm going to say uh, str copy into the temp from the data. So I'm going to copy everything to temp. Now that I copy that one, I'm going to make that, uh, I'm going to delete the old one first delete the old so the data will be gone so the old data will be gone now I'm gonna say data will point to temp so now my data grew bigger so essentially uh, it became like this um, got twice as big now that that happened, now that the data got bigger, so this is the resizing thingy that I've done in here. So resize, copy, delete, you know that, you know the procedure. Now what I need to do, I need to make my string pointer point to uh, the address of the beginning. So now the SDR has to go point to the next one right so it has to actually go to point to next one and then next one and then next one and it keep growing like that so how far it has to go uh, it has to go to data plus uh, the CSDR buffer size multiply by number of buffers minus one because if if I add the second one so if I add three it has to come to the previous one not to the end one so I'm gonna say number of buffers minus one but obviously like that so so essentially I'm gonna say jump to the end of it okay so uh, And we got to remember that this, this uh, uh, get line reads one less. Remember that. Get line reads one less. So this is not buffer size. This is buffer size minus one. So it is minus one because that puts one extra. That's, uh, that's how get line works. So I have to put over here the uh, minus one over here. Minus one. Now string is going to keep pointing to the next one. What I need to do next is to clear C in, uh, clear ISDR, uh, uh, clear, and obviously say done is false. I don't, um, uh, it's false. So what happens, then it's going to go back up, and this time it's going to get line into string that continues from the next one. Keep reading the one that is in a buffer, up to the limiter if it reaches to the size then it's fine I think we're good and at the end so now SDR over here have so so let's say the user enters something like this so user enters like this and it stops so user enters this much and stops now I want that exact size so what I need to do I, I need to just uh, resize the memory and set it up and be done with it in two seconds but for now let's just return it like this we knew we need to do that so do a resize do a resize here otherwise we're gonna have a bigger chunk than what it is but uh, we don't need that for now so in here I'm gonna say return data uh, and that should actually kind of work. 
Let me just think. Uh, not done. Going to go over there. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if it's going to work or not. And oh, it's uh, 126. So let's uh, bring it up in here. The program dot yada yada yada. Let me just clear that up. Or I'm going to bring this down. Maybe I'm going to need it to to walk through. So let's bring this one down. So I can see what I'm doing. So for this one, I have to say something like this. Char character say name and I have to say delete name because after it's done I have to delete it now I'm gonna say see out name and now in here I'm gonna say name is set to read from C in um, and the delimiter is gonna be new line okay oh and it's utils Okay, let me just try it, see if it works. Uh, and I have to say, see out, hello, name. I'm just going to run it first, let it crash on me. Oh, I get 55,000 errors. Uh, uh, I think I need to put STD in the header file include IO stream if you have to go you can leave you gotta see the recording later on but I want to finish it before I go so that's STD like that uh, rebuild CSTR buff size. Oh, 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 because it's static, this has to be static too. Don't ask me why, but that has to be static too, otherwise it won't be able to access it. It has to be. Um, and the static, oh, shoot, now it goes to OP345. So I'll take it out and put it as a global variable. Sorry about that. So that's what we're going to do. Save it. And in here, um, yeah. So, okay, this is okay. So that's a global variable. And if it's a global variable, then I'm going to bring it in. Yeah, let it be. Mm. It's a global variable. I'm going to bring it in here, not there. Rebuild. Rebuild. Okay, looks okay. Let's let's try and see what happens. So in here, I'm gonna go um, F10. Uh, read that one. Go to read. It comes over here and it does get line. Now in here, I'm gonna say far that Soleiman Lu and hit enter and let's keep track and see what happens. So uh, now. This should, it read seven characters, obviously, as you see, and definitely it is failed. So it comes in here, adds a number, number of buffers. It uh, adds, it makes it 15 characters. All right. So it's with seven. So it becomes two, 15, 14 plus one for null. It becomes 15 characters, which is fine. Then it copies the data that is far that into temp um, and a space, deletes the data sets the data point to temp now it's going to set the string over here that is pointing to some garbage to data plus whatever it is and that should be null it means it essentially points right to the end of the last one now it clears it says done uh, is false goes back over here does does another get line and this get line l gets the soli mandu afterwards but if you look at data Data should be far that Soleimanlu, Soleima, okay? So it goes like that. Number of buffers becomes three. Now uh, allocates 
as we see over here 22 so three sevenths that's 21 one extra which is fine copies deletes uh, sets the SDR to the end of the data again clears goes back up reads the last two characters which is uh, sorry NLOO but now uh, data will be Soli Manlu. It's, I'm lucky I have such a long name. And then it comes out, done is correct, and data is correct, comes out and says, hello for that Soli Manlu over here. The only problem that I have is that I have 22 characters to keep something that is less than 22 characters. So we, do, we need to do a final resize down in here to make it completely efficient as it's supposed to be. And why don't I see my output? Oh, that's not the one. There we go. So hello far that Sony Manlu. That worked. Now the only thing I need to do over here is to do a resize, which means uh, I have to uh, uh, create the temp again. So what do I have here? Wait a minute. So I have a data over here. So, so SDR is useless, so I can use SDR for that. So I'm going to say um, uh, SDR is set to new. Uh, uh, character and then in here I'm going to use uh, strlen of data plus one so I get the exact size that I want and now I'm going to say str copy from uh, uh, into str the data now I'm going to say delete data data and return the SDR. I think we're good now. Now it's going to re uh, resize over here exactly to the size of the data. Copy the data into it. Delete the data, return the SDR. I think we're good. So now if I run it, now it, sh it should actually give me an error, seriously. Oh, it's SDR copies, capital C. One more time. Okay, so hello there. I am trying something new here to see if it works. Hit enter and everything's set and done perfectly. So now this read of mine gets absolutely whatever you enter into the uh, string from any medium that you want. So you can read from a file if you want to, read from whatever you want. Uh, are we okay with this? All right, so good thing is that now I can actually read from a file as much as I want. Like I can actually go to whatever delimiter that I want. I just need to find out how to, uh, like what the delimiter can be. Maybe the delimiter can be an integer. Let me see if, no, it's a character. I don't know. Yeah, we have to check it out. But this this looks fine by me, um, and I think we're done. So this is good. this is uh, kind of a review and uh, like go through all the things that we can do with input and output and see in and see out. And hopefully, uh, I made um, your day by these things. You can. Um, uh, I strongly suggest to optimize it. See if you can make it better, and use it uh, in all the project and anything that you want. Okay. Any questions before we go? Please say no if you don't have any questions. I got one. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I just didn't get why you uh, add the CS, uh, CSTR read buffer size and no buffer size to the data and assign it to SDR. One more time, one more time, one more time. I didn't do that. In line 55. Line just, 55, okay. Yeah, I just did that, but well, you assigned them all of these to the SDR. Okay, so data is the address of the beginning, correct? Right. How much did I add? Okay, this one. Correct. So, right. so this plus one, so this is the amount that I added, correct? This one is right. null. We don't care about that. Yeah. So if I, so let's put it this way. So I'm just going to quickly draw it over here. If anybody wants to go, please go. I'm just answering someone over here, okay? But yeah. why did we do that? Let me just explain very easily, okay? So say these are the, the things that are the chunks that are added. So that's one, Sorry. that's two, that's three. So three chunks. We are at three chunks right now, yeah. okay? Okay. And, 
and this is where the data is actually pointing at okay so that's data right what is the situation in which we actually add the, the other one so the SDR is here so SDR the last time pointed to this location that was that was where SDR point that's where SDR pointed last all right str correct and right. it read it reached to the end and it failed it came in here it was two before str was pointing here correct correct so now i made it three correct correct now where should str point to the three to the to the third one which is the yeah. end of where second one correct second. Right. So if num of buffs is three, the address should be data, but multiply by two, which that's num buffs number one, one minus one. I see. So I'm saying from data, go buffer size multiply number of buffs number one. So it essentially points to the beginning of the new, uh, newly allocated memory. Yeah, points to the beginning of new allocated. Newly allocated memory, yeah. exactly. Oh, and I then you that. can continue reading and get line because everything is in buffer. When I clear it, get line continues where it left off from keyboard and reads the rest and it keeps going over there. Very good. Are we good? Very, yeah, yeah, I'm good. All right. Thank you very much. No problem. Uh, so, uh, shall we end the session? Say yes if you want to end the session and you don't have any questions. Or yeah. time have a good day. <laughs> you too. All right. Okay, so I'm hearing a couple of yeses, which means we are going. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm going to stop the recording. And what I'm going to do is post the YouTube video in the recordings uh, on uh, GitHub. So when you want to uh, look at the recording for today, where you need to go would be uh, the notes. Where you need to go, the notes, and then down here. We're going to end, add it over here on November 16, and it's going to be over here, uh, IO uh, functions. Have a beautiful day, everyone.